Biological databases store biological data and their main objectives are data storage, information retrieval and knowledge discovery. Biological databases can be classified as primary databases that store the primary sequences and those primary sequences are then annotated and put into secondary databases. Whereas the specialized databases, uh, they are dedicated towards say some specific organisms or you can have like disease data. Biological databases can also be classified on the basis of the type of data they contain. For example, they can be protein databases, or nucleotide databases, can be protein databases, they can be RNA, genomes or gene expression databases. Uh, the issues uh, which are in general, generally which are present in all other databases, uh, similar issues are seen in biological databases that may be correlated with the relatively slow pace of uh, quality assurance techniques as compared to the, uh, the pace with which new data is coming. So those issues are similar like redundancy, inconsistency incons and incompatibility. Uh, whereas now we talk about nucleotide sequence databases. So nucleotide uh, sequence databases are the types of biological databases which store nucleotide sequence data in it. Uh, that can be cDNA or EST or DNAs. Here we have the diagram where we have a genomic DNA. We have different exons. As we know in eukaryotes we have exons and introns. So exons they get transcribed into messenger RNA and we can get cDNA from that messenger RNA through reverse transcription and then we can store that cDNA uh, into our databases. Uh, whereas the ESTs are subsets uh, within those cDNAs. Nucleotide sequence databases, they were first assembled into GeneBank. Uh, that was back in 1982 at Los Alamos National Laboratory, LANL, under the leadership of uh, uh, Walter Gold. GeneBank is now working under the umbrella of NCBI. NCBI stands for National Center for Biotechnology Information. So it's a central repository that stores multiple types of biological data, which includes genomes. We have their assemblies. We have their sequencing data. Uh, we have their expression data and whatnot. In this diagram, we see the page where you can search for any kind of data. There is a drop down list, so that provides you different options. Here is the page for GeneBank. So if you want to look about nucleotides and genome sequences, uh, this is the best resource. Whereas NCBI was established at United States, um, Europeans, uh, they established AMBL, which was European Molecular Biology Lab, uh, which is uh, established in 1980. Same way in Japan, uh, there was the establishment of DNA and Data Bank of Japan, DDBJ, that established in 1984. And all of them, they get together into an international collaboration uh, which we name as International Nucleotide Sequence Database Collaboration, INSDC. That is a collaboration between DDBJ and CBI. And here in this diagram, you see, you say, uh, you see here is ENA, European Nucleotide Archive, uh, Oblique EBI. So AMBL, they uh, established EBI, European Bioinformatics Institute, uh, specially to uh, deal with the bioinformatics kind of stuff. And within them, they have established ENA, that is European Nucleotide Archive, to take care of the uh, sequence, DNA sequence uh, data sets. Uh, here is the page for INSDC. As you can see, the all three collaborators, uh, their logos are there. Same way, if you look into the data, we can have next-gen sequence reads, we can have capillary reads, and we can also have information about different samples and slides in this first page so we can get our next generation sequence data from this archive also which we will uh, when we go further in this course we will start playing with that kind of data. Uh, if we look into the growth of gene bank, if we look into the number of bases in the gene bank, now they are uncountable in trillions and so big numbers starting in somewhere in 1982 and if we look into this curve, blue is the growth of gene bank and red ones are also, we are comparing here the whole gen genome sequences which are starting somewhere in 2003 or 4 after the publication of the Human Genome Project. So if you look into those uh, number of bases, it seems like they double every 18 months. So the growth is huge, exponential. Same way if we look into the sequences, there are also somewhere 
around thousands of them somewhere in 1982, but now there are more than 100 million sequences in this gene bank. So in the end, we conclude that biological databases, they store biological data, and we look into the INSTC, which is a collaboration between the AMBL and CBI and DDVJ, and the growth of uh, data in the databases is exponential. Uh, if you look into gene bank, it's like the data is doubling every 18 months.